Welcome to the Green Coffee Beanery's coffee tutorials. In this episode we'll be covering how to find the best ratio of coffee beans and water. To do this we'll first talk about coffee bean chemistry, then cover key brewing variables that impact the final flavor, and finally we'll show you how to put that together to make the perfect brew for your tastes. When you break down a roasted coffee bean, approximately 72% of the material is cellulose and 28% of the material are solubles. Now cellulose is what gives the bean shape and structure, but it does not dissolve in water. This is what is left behind after the brewing process. Solubles, on the other hand, are the extractable materials providing coloring, aroma, and flavor. These are the materials that are potentially in your coffee. And when I say potentially in your coffee, it leads into two key terms that we'll be discussing today. One is the soluble's yield, and the second is the soluble's concentration. To understand soluble's yield, let's take this roasted coffee bean and imagine it's composed of this spectrum of solubles you see here. And we'll say that the good flavors and aromas are represented by the warm colors, the reds, oranges, yellows, and that the blues and purples, cooler colors, represent materials more associated with bitterness. You'll notice the dark green molecule is right on the border of good flavors and aromas and bitterness, and this molecule represents both. And this is okay, because bitterness is part of the natural flavor profile of coffee, and we actually do want a hint of bitterness, but not the excessive bitterness that makes coffee unpleasant. Now, during the brewing process, the good flavors and aromas are the solubles that are extracted first by the water, with solubles representing bitterness extracted later in the process. To carry this out a little further, let's say we have three cups of coffee, the first of which was brewed for two minutes, the second of which is brewed for six minutes, and the third of which was brewed for ten minutes. Most likely, the cup that was brewed for two minutes is going to be an underdeveloped cup of coffee. You can see that we have reds, oranges, but we don't have the light greens, yellows, or even the dark greens that are going to really round out the flavor of the coffee. The coffee that was brewed for six minutes, on the other hand, is what we would call an ideal brew. It has the full range of good flavors and aromas to give you a nice cup of coffee. Finally, our third cup that was brewed for 10 minutes was going to have been exposed to the water probably for too long. Now we're getting the blues and the purples and we're bringing in the bitterness that we did not want and ending up with a bitter cup of coffee. Now that we've explained soluble's yield, we'll move on to soluble's concentration. And to do that, we'll focus on the cup of coffee that we identified as being ideal. While soluble's yield covered the types of materials that were extracted, soluble's concentration covers the quantity of materials that were extracted. For example, if we had our ideal mix of molecules, but we had them in a much higher concentration, we would have a strong cup of coffee. Conversely, this same yield of molecules, but in a lower concentration, would be a weak cup of coffee. Not a bad flavor, but in low concentration and relatively watery tasting. These two factors combine to give us nine potential cups of coffee from each brew. So what do we do with this information? The first step is to identify what type are you currently brewing and what change do you want to make? To understand where we want to go, we first have to understand where we are. So take a minute to look at this grid and figure out where you fit today and where you would like to be. For step two, we're going to adjust one thing based on your goal either the amount of coffee or the amount of water that you're using. Here's how you do it. Let's say you have an underdeveloped cup of coffee that you want to move closer to ideal. To do this, you're going to use the same amount of coffee, but with more water. More water exposure time is going to increase the solubles yield and give you the fuller flavor profile that you're looking for. Conversely, if your current coffee is bitter, you're going to want to use the same amount of coffee with less water. Less water time, as you recall, will decrease the solubles yield and keep you from extracting the bitter molecules that you'd really rather not taste in your cup. To manage concentration, if your current coffee is weak, you'll want to add more coffee, but keeping the same amount of water. More coffee will increase the solubles concentration, so your flavor will stay the same, but be more prominent. 
Again, conversely, if your current coffee is too strong, you're going to want to use less coffee but the same amount of water. Less coffee decreases the soluble's concentration and is going to keep the same flavor profile but in a less strong version. Now the amount of coffee and water are obviously not the only variables that will impact these things. Other factors such as the water temperature or the fineness of your grind will have an impact as well. But adjusting the amount of water or the amount of coffee is something that anyone can do very simply and with a little trial and error can have a significant improvement in any brew using any method. So we hope this helps. For more information, you can visit our website at greencoffeebeanery.com and let us know what you'd like to see in future videos, either in the comment section below or by visiting our website. Until then, keep brewing.